Bob's best ever friend. It was Tuesday morning in space and nothing much was happening. By 10 o'clock, Bob, the man on the moon, had finished all of his jobs for the day. There were no space tourists to entertain and his friends Billy and Sam were away on a day trip to Pluto, visiting the most exciting pet show. They hoped to see some alien animals there, but Bob thought they'd be disappointed. After all, everyone knows there's no such thing as aliens, and especially not alien animals. With nobody to talk to, Bob felt a little glum. Then at lunchtime, he had to bounce. He even had to bounce on his bouncy castle alone, and that never, but never had happened before. Quite frankly, Bob was a bit lonely. To cheer himself up, Bob went for a quick spin around the universe in his rocket. Nothing much was happening there either. Unfortunately, every last planet was closed for the winter, so Bob stopped off on a passing asteroid to enjoy a cup of tea and a corned beef slice. The view was beautiful. It was just a shame that no one was there to share it. What I need, thought Bob to himself, is a best ever friend, a chum. Someone to help with intergalactic missions and jigsaw puzzles. A pal who's always going to be by my side. But where on earth can I find a friend like that? For the rest of the day, Bob pondered his problem hmm, until it was time to return to Earth for a nice supper of fish fingers and peas. As a Tuesday treat, he allowed himself to eat in front of the TV. The newsreader was warning that troublesome asteroids had been causing havoc elsewhere in the solar system, and he was now in danger. And they were now in danger of crashing into Earth. Bob was glued to the screen. He wished he had someone to watch the programme with. It was so exciting. As he sipped his cocoa in bed, Bob thought it would be so much easier if a best ever friend could find him instead. The next day, Bob didn't have to start work until the evening, so after some early star jumps in the garden, he cycled into town to do a spot of shopping. Firstly, he had a quick peek around the modern art gallery. Then he bought two smallish batteries to power his rocket, a smart pair of moon, moon patterned underpants, half price in the sale, and a newspaper, hot off the press. Their streets were busier than ever, Bob wondered how on earth anyone could hope to spot a best ever friend in a place like this. In the midst of his daydreams, Bob suddenly found himself staring into the window of a local pet shop. Cats, rats and bats. At first, he was a trifle confused. Why had he gone there? Then he remembered Clive and Keith, his, cousins, uh, his cousin Dougal's goldfish. Bob was looking after them for a day or two, and that morning he thought they were looking rather peckish. As he paid for their squishy, delicious fishy food, 59p, a strange notion popped into Bob's head. Perhaps his best ever friend could be a pet. Bob had a good look around inside, but he couldn't see anything that looked like a best ever friend. To tell you the truth, some of the animals looked a little... Odd to him. <sighs> oh well, sighed Bob to himself. You can't rush these things. His thoughts were interrupted by the chimes of the town clock. It was half past four. Time for tea. The best tea in town was served at the Moon Soup Pit Stop Cafe. Bob felt quite at home amongst the moon pictures and decorations, although sometimes he did call it the Moon Stop Pit Soup Cafe by mistake. He wondered if anyone would recognise him without his spacesuit on. No one did. So he sat quietly and nibbled his favourite moon soup crater cake. He knew it was really just a donut, but it was tip top tasty all the same. It was a shame there was no time for seconds, but night was falling and Bob had a job to do. The moon was waiting. Bob pedalled as fast as he could to the rocket launch pad in a super fast flash, changed into his man on the moon suit. 
he needed to reach the moon before the first moon tour tourist spaceships arrived. There were snacks and entertainments to prepare. After clambering aboard and flicking lots of switches, his rocket began to rumble and count down five, four, three, two, one, lift off! By quarter to six, he was zooming towards the golden moon and by six o'clock, he was there. Bob welcomed the tourists with a free mini pork pie and speech. Then he performed his thrilling moon themed variety show and everyone went home happy. Everyone that is, except Bob, who was alone once more. Quietly, he packed away his props and began his weekly crater count. And that's when it happened. There, popping out of crater 204, was a little furry tail. What could it be? The closer Bob got to it, the faster the tail wagged. And then, as if by magic, something amazing shot out of the crater. No one in the whole universe would have expected to see what Bob saw at that moment. It was a dog. The most smiley, springy dog Bob had ever seen. He had no idea where it had come from or how it had got there, but he didn't care. He didn't even care that it looked a little odd. All Bob knew was that from this moment onwards, they would be best ever friends. It was as if it had been written in the stars. Bob called his dog Barry, and each day with their friends, they would run and they would leap and they would play. Except, of course, on Tuesday lunchtimes. On Tuesday lunchtimes, they would bounce and bounce and bounce. 